Hello, everyone. I'm Arlene Garza, and today I am happy to bring to you another episode of Empowered Investing with Leading Ladies. Why did we come up with this podcast? Well, to me, it was very important to share information and knowledge with ladies and have other ladies share their experiences on investing so that we can, as a group, empower ladies to take control of their financial future. Today, I have a very special guest with me, someone that I've known for a very long time, and it is my daughter, Victoria Garza Frazier. Victoria, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Mom. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on your phenomenal podcast. Um, I'm Victoria Garza Frazier. I'm the manager of acquisitions and capital events here at Reap Equity. Um, so yeah, honored to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, you know, I want to go back um, to when you were younger, uh, only because that's when you started investing in real estate, unbeknownst to you. Uh, so your dad and I uh, decided that what we would do is invest some of yours and your brother's college funds in multifamily properties. And the reason we did that is because we had already found that it was a great way to grow your money. So we felt like the power of both the cash flow along the way and the appreciation was going to be a big benefit to y'all. So I do remember uh, when the uh, distribution checks came for the first time and we showed them to y'all, you and your brother, uh, Jacob, and the first question you asked is, where did this money come from? It has my name on it. What, what did I do to get it? And so we walked through the process of your dad's and, and my decision to invest in multifamily on your behalf. And I think maybe it planted a seed. I don't know. You tell me, did it plant a seed for you on investments in general and or multifamily? Yeah, I think it definitely planted a seed for us that if you pa if passively invest, that you can receive distributions along the way. And then I remember the first sale that we had Seeing the return um, after a property is sold also helps solidify it for us um, that if you invest your money, you will get rewarded along the way and once the property sells. So I remember you encouraging us to keep our distributions in our savings account so that we can redeploy them. And so now that's exactly what me and Jack do. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it was part of the learning process. The other part of the learning process, as you will remember, is you and your brother worked on our properties, our apartment complexes here in San Antonio when you were in high school. The theory behind that is, you know, we all learn from our parents and one of the greatest gifts that my parents gave us, my siblings and I, was the power of a strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted that to be part of your learning process also and your brothers so tell us about your first the first experience working on a multifamily property i remember working at one of y'all's first apartment complexes as a leasing agent and that was an eye-opening experience um pulling traffic in selling them on the unit and selling them on the property um, and then processing all their paperwork and moving them into a unit was incredibly rewarding but it was also difficult work um, so I think now I have that appreciation for everyone that does work on site, um, how difficult the job can be, how varied the job can be, um, but also how rewarding it can be. Um, so that really gave me a lot of perspective early on in my multifamily career. I remember you came home. It must have been that first week uh, that you worked and you said, mom, people sometimes lie. <laughs> And I thought, oh, gosh, what happened? And so you proceeded to tell me the story about the lady who said she couldn't pay her rent. So what did you do? Yeah, so she came into the office and said she couldn't pay her rent. Um, and so I sat down with her and looked at her budget, um, looked at her income, and then looked at her expenses. And we were able to figure out that she was able to afford the apartment that she did qualify for to begin with. Um, and we were able to figure out her budget so that she would be able to afford the apartment. Okay, that's phenomenal. And initially she had said she couldn't. So 
was not maybe necessarily that she was lying. It was maybe necessarily she didn't have all the information that she right. needed to truly know that she could or couldn't afford that apartment. So that was the start of your earliest, earliest career. Mm -hmm. And then I remember um, your call when you'd moved to Miami and you said, Mom, I have a master's in psychology, but what I'm really thinking I want, I want to do that I'm passionate about is real estate. Yeah. So how did you get started in Miami? What did you do to take that next step? Yeah, I think once you have the real estate bug, especially the multifamily bug, it's just something that stays with you. Um, so I got my real estate license in Florida and I wanted to work on the commercial side. And then I knew eventually I wanted to come and work with you and dad. So I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to go and find a group um, similar to yours in Miami and work for them. So I found a group in Miami, vertically integrated, just like Reef. And so I applied for the job and I was accepted. And so I worked in many different roles, um, some investor relations, marketing, um, helped with asset management, helped with a, a lot of different things. But I really got to learn um, from on the corporate side how they do things um, at that company. And then I remember the phone call. Um, you were ready to come home mm -hmm. and you said, would it be okay if I came back and worked with you and dad uh, at REAP? And I will tell you that that was probably one of the most exciting days for me because as a parent uh, and as something that your dad and I had hoped and wished for, you want a legacy business. You want a business that you're building for the purpose of it carrying forward mm -hmm. uh, as part of your legacy through your kids or through your sure. family. And so your decision to come work with us um, was a true blessing for us. It was something we yeah. really, really uh, were excited about. Aww. And then, you know, I'll, I'll switch and say that to watch you grow up into an adult was fantastic. You uh, have always been very kind and respectful of others. And now to see your growth on the personal, I mean, on the professional side has also been incredible. So walk us through kind of how you progressed within the company. Yeah. Well, thank you, mom. I just want to echo that. I mean, you and dad are incredible role models that I get to look up to um, and mentors as well. So I just feel really lucky to be doing this with you guys and with Jack. So I'm just really grateful that we get to do this because not everyone gets to work with their family every day. So, so when I returned from Miami, I started on property um, as a leasing agent again. Um, and that was incredibly crucial because as, as time changes, so does technology, so do new procedures. So I got to learn again what it was like to be on property. Um, and I feel like that experience has made me a better underwriter, better refinances, better dispositions. Um, and then from there, I worked as an assistant manager. And then I spent time with a property manager um, and our vice president of operations at the time. Um, so I really got to learn a lot in those six months um, about everything on site. Um, and then from there, I joined Reap Equity. Uh, I moved from Reap Residential to Reap Equity and joined as an analyst. So from there, I was underwriting deals. I was doing location analysis. I was learning how REIT procures debt um, and then how we uh, acquire property and take it over. Um, so I started as an analyst and then I got to work on the asset management side as well. So then my role became combined, half acquisitions, half asset management, um, which is, again, crucial parts of the business that are so great to learn. Um, especially as you're starting in your career. Um, so following that, um, my role expanded and I became manager of acquisitions. Um, and then I also do our refinances and our disposition. So it's been really awesome and great to work in the company and grow in the company. So what do you love most about your job? If you could pick maybe the top two to three things, what would those be? 
I would say one, working with my family. I mean, that's, that's the best. That's invaluable. Um, I would say two is the deal hunting. I love to find a good deal and then marry that with some really great financing for just an incredible opportunity um, for our investors. So that would be number two. And then number three would be just working with my team. You know, we have some just incredibly talented people that I get to work with. I learn from them. They learn from me. And it's just a really awesome collaborative environment. So I think at the end of the day, it's all about the people. Great. So in your job or in your life, what inspires you or motivates you today? Is there certain things you do, certain interactions you have? What inspires you? I guess what inspires me is continuing on the family legacy, um, preserving everything that you guys have built and also growing it. I think that's a big part. So that when Jack and I have kids, if they choose to be in the business, that they have an opportunity to do so. So I think it's it's about legacy. Great. And I'm often asked by parents, what did you do? How did you inspire the kids or convince them to be part of the business? And I will say that for us, our message to our kids was find something that you're passionate about and do it. Mm -hmm and then invest your money in real estate. So we always added that <laughs> in the back end of it. Um, but I think, you know, for parents that are watching this, if you want your your um, child involved, your young adult child involved, go over your why. Why are you so passionate about, in our case, real estate investing? You know, what are some of the things that uh, drive you to do that. And in our case, I think early on, you know, we had a 24 unit property that my husband and I managed. This was Victoria and her brother would go to the resident events mm -hmm. and they would hand out cookies and pizza. And so they had the interaction with the people that truly matter. And that is the residents. So what we wanted them to understand, I, I hope, I think it did, mm -hmm. uh, come through is that um, you have an opportunity in your life to do well. You can do well financially. You can be success successful in so many ways. Um, but in my mind, when you're doing good for others and doing good for a community, your reach expands. You're, you're able to help more and more people. So for us, that is one of the things that I think Hopefully the message came across, and I think it did, mm -hmm. that this is a business that is very feel good. Yes. It is very much about how can we make an impact in the communities that we are involved with, that yeah. we own properties in. And I've seen you and your brother do it again from the very beginning mm -hmm. when you were handing out those cookies and pizza to the to the residents at our resident events so that we could build community where these individuals were. So, you know, I think that was the start of it. So Victoria, in your young life, you've accomplished a lot. You've purchased millions of dollars of real estate. Um, maybe you know that number and, and can share it with us. But what are you looking to accomplish in the future in terms of your career? Yeah. So what I'm looking to accomplish is to grow Reed's portfolio. Um, I know our immediate goal is one billion, and I think that we can surpass that one billion, two billion, three to four billion. And right now we have forty two hundred units of assets under management. So continuing to grow that to ten thousand. Um, I think that is what I'd like to do um, and grow my team. I'd also like to continue to mentor and professionally develop my team. Um, as well as just to continue Reap's goal of improving communities and making these properties nice for our residents. Awesome. You know, one of the things that I am asked by others, and in particular other women, is what advice would you give women in the business world? 
So my biggest piece of advice would be to not to, um, my advice that I would give, um, to other women would be, don't be afraid to speak up. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions, take action whenever you can. Um, and always be growing um, and improving your knowledge. It just takes 15 minutes a day to read a couple of articles. Um, and I think that will set you um, apart. Yep. So, you know, you you talk about growth. And I know in today's world, we have such great access to mentors, which were important to me in my 20 years in the banking industry. Uh, and or coaches, you know, mm -hmm. coaches that are professionally trained to help you achieve what it is you're trying to achieve. So tell us about your mentor or your coach and what sort of work are you doing with the coach in order to improve? So I work with an incredible coach um, who helps foster my growth. And one of the things he works with me on is mindset. Um, sometimes you just need those reminders that you can do the hard things if you put the work into it. Um, and he also helps me just think bigger. Um, if I have a goal, he pushes me um, that that goal could be bigger. Um, and on the mentorship side, I have a mentor who's also uh, my boss who helps me on the technical side of things. He taught me how to underwrite um, and how to look at a T12 and look at a rent roll and really be scrutinous um, on the acquisition and underwriting side. That's fantastic. As a multifamily investor, there are lots of things that you should be looking for uh, before you decide to put your money into an investment. Uh, there is the sponsor or the person that is heading up that investment. Uh, what are some of the things that you would suggest that people look for in that sponsor or that general partner that's bringing that investment opportunity to you? Yes. So the first thing I would look at is track record. Um, how long have they been in multifamily? Um, and what has their experience been um, throughout that journey? Um, I think another thing that I would look for is transparency and reporting. Um, I know here at REAP, we send out monthly reports and do annual webinars um, on the assets that we do have. So it's important that your sponsor keeps you informed um, of that investment throughout the entire investment cycle. Um, so transparency and reporting is key. And I think lastly, are they financially secure? Um, will they be able to step in if the property needs extra capital? Awesome. I think that's fantastic. So we've covered the general partner or the sponsor side of things. Mm -hmm. um, you're underwriting properties all the time. I yes. think last year you and your team underwrote 300 assets. So what are some of the things if you were going to tell an investor are key things to look for in the property itself that they're considering investing in? What would that be? So here at REAP, we have um, the criteria of the property that we look for. Um, first and foremost is location. Um, as you've always said, mom, you can't pick up the property and move it somewhere else. So um, location is incredibly important. Um, we also look at flood zone. We don't want our properties to be in a flood zone. We look at crime because again, the safety of all of the individuals on site is important to us. So we always look at headline risk. Um, another thing is physical characteristics. We don't buy properties with chillers. Um, and we don't buy properties with flat roofs. So that is our typical just physical characteristics that we look for of the property. So I know one of the things that um, I have seen your team do is if a property doesn't meet that initial criteria, you mm -hmm. don't underwrite it. That's true. So once once it does make that first pass, what happens in your process and your team's process? Yeah. So once it meets our first pass, then we will send our, our performa and the T12 and the rent roll to our lender so they can size it. That's a big part of underwriting is what is the debt going to look like? Because that is anywhere from 60 to 70% of your capital stack. So we do send it to our lender and get their feedback on what our debt terms will look like because that can and will change underwriting. I think that's, that's awesome. You know, I think that is important, you know, as investment education is important. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
Some people look for real estate groups. Some people look for a mentor. Some people read books. And today there's so much of available information, like our website. We have yeah. blogs, we have white papers, we have all of that information. So the technical information is there. But to your earlier point, you know, making that next step from, okay, I found this property, the numbers look good, it's time to go. So what, you know, mindset then comes into play. And then comes those myths, you know, those yep. things that we've all heard or believed mm -hmm. that are not reality, but they are a myth. So what is the biggest myth in your experience that keeps investors from investing in multifamily? One big myth is that you need to be a millionaire to invest in multifamily. Um, I know for me and my husband, we invest um, smaller amount. Um, in every single deal that REIT puts out. Um, and that helps us uh, meet our financial goals. Great. So to date, uh, how many properties have you invested in? I am invested in 21 properties. Wow. And you may not, you may or may not want to share your age, but are you under 30? I am. I am 29. Awesome. So for all the young people that are looking at investing, here is a great example of a person who has uh, made it a priority to invest her dollars in such a way to build a solid financial future for herself and for her spouse. So Victoria, you just shared a great thing about a myth that exists in multifamily investing, and that's that you have to have millions of dollars to get started, which you just told us you don't, and I know for a fact that you don't. But now I want to switch and really talk about how has your life changed um, since you started investing in multifamily as a result of investing yeah. in multifamily? I think for me, investing in multifamily has allowed me to have financial freedom. So uh, my husband and I have been able to travel. We've been able to buy a home. We've been able to grow his business um, and have certainty and cash flow through our multifamily investments along the way. And we've also been able to give charitably, which really is our main passion and goal in life. So one of the great benefits of multifamily investing is appreciation. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by appreciation is the property maybe uh, starts out being valued at, let's call it $10 million when we buy it. Um, but by the time we sell it, that property has increased in value and maybe we sold it, sold it for $25 million. So that's appreciation. Uh, tell us about your biggest win. What has been the greatest return that you have made on one of your investments? I would say it was one of the multifamily properties that I was invested in that we sold um, and I got a 3.71 X equity multiple. Um, and that was the biggest return. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we've talked about mentors and coaches, and I think mm -hmm. you have them throughout your life. Um, one of my biggest, uh, role models was my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, she raised, she and my father raised 10 of us and, she was not able to go to college, not because she didn't have grades, um, but because my uh, grandparents did not have the financial means to send her. So it became her mission to make sure that all 10 of her kids, uh, myself and my siblings, all attended college, which she uh, was very successful at mm -hmm. helping support to make that happen. Uh, but the other thing about her was that despite how busy she was with 10 kids, she always found time to volunteer at our church. Uh, she was the lady or the person who headed up all the religious education at our church. So don't know if it was part escape or you mm -hmm. know, what, but she definitely did a lot of good in our community. So I want you to think about women um, in history. Mm -hmm. Tell us one person in history that has inspired you. Thank you for that, Victoria. I think Princess Diana did uh, 
have a special significance to uh, women across the world. Not only was she um, seen as someone who held her uh, presence very well, but she also committed a lot of time to acts of charity, yeah. um, which is very, very honorable uh, for her for her to have done. So I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, significance. You know, it can mean so many different things. But for you in a business setting, would you say that dedication, discipline, or passion hold the most significance for you? I think for me, passion would hold the most significance. I think if you're very passionate about something, the discipline and the dedication will come with it. Um, if you really love what you do, you're going to want to read more about it. You're going to want to practice your skills. You're going to want to um, grow your knowledge. So I would say passion. Wonderful. You know, I think um, if I was asked that question, I would agree with you. To me, passion is energy. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you feel the power that comes from focusing on what you're passionate about. So I agree with you. I, I think passion is what propels us forward okay. when we're at trying to achieve a goal or searching for a particular outcome. Victoria, it has been such a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Um, there is so much that we could go on and on and discuss and I have truly enjoyed watching you grow up and now watching you grow as a professional woman. I'm so very proud of all that you have accomplished and to see you now uh, managing these acquisitions that are you know, 25, $30 million at a time is really incredible. And to see you following your passion through investing in multifamily has also been rewarding for me and your dad because we know that what we've shared seems to have hit home and i think that is something that any parent wants um and i will just say thank you for sharing your thoughts your knowledge with me today and with with the ladies or, or whoever may be watching this podcast and i would just like to encourage other women that are out there you don't have to be my age you don't have to be victoria's age you can be anywhere in between and it's never too soon to start to look at your financial future and to find ways to achieve financial freedom, and not just for yourself, but for your family or your extended family, whatever your goals may be, or to have philanthropic uh, purposes. I know one of the things we recently did was commit to an organization that helps kids who are aging out of the foster care system. Mm -hmm. So this investing has allowed us to have the means to be able to do that. And I just want to wish you continued uh, success in all that you do. I will be right here for you, just as I've always been since you were little, mm -hmm. and continue to make us proud. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, Mom. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I love working with you and Dad and Jack every single day. So just continue. I'm just excited to continue to do it. Sounds wonderful. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, please join us again uh, for Empowered Investing Through Leading Ladies. Have a great day.